Stork City, otherwise known as the greatest Barclays team of all time. Can you do it on a rainy night in Stork? Is a common football phrase even still used to this day. And the legacy of Stork City in the Premier League is one that can never really be written off. Stork City away was known as a place of hostility, where Stork City's rise for the football leagues had to be maintained by being uncompromising, by being in your face, aggressive, and by being a little bit off the cuff and doing things a bit differently. Therefore, the iconic Rory de Lapp long throw became a staple of their entire Premier League stay. I can look back on that Stoke City side in the Premier League and in terms of the general feel of the club, it does remind me a bit of how Burnley was under Sean Dyche back in Premier League as well by Burnley away being a bit hostile, a really just unfavourable away day because you know you're not going to get what you want that easily. Stoke City was relegated from the Premier League in the 2017-18 season, which is a long time. It's been five, six years since Dork has last been in the Prem and it feels a lot longer than what it really should be. And what is the main issue? For many people outside of the Championship, they kind of always look at Stoke as a team that they always rank in their predictions to be pretty high up the table because they just feel like, well, inevitably they're going to get it right. And in theory, that has some logic. They're not been particularly poor due to a lack of funds. In their first season down, they spent around 50 million pound. The main issue is, is that that's kind of handicapped them moving forward because of FFP. It's just been spent completely just idiotically, leading to five years down the line and Stoke City's ground is now flat, lifeless, representing a much more different club to what it once was over 10 years ago. And why I'm doing this today is that as of this morning, the Stoke City manager or ex-manager, Stephen Schumacher, has been sacked by the club five games into the season after what was somewhat of a saga between Stoke and Plymouth Argyle to get Stephen Schumacher to the club. And after having an entire window with Stephen Schumacher, buying players that he wants, he's already been sacked within 16 days, which shows of this never-ending cycle of Stoke City making the wrong decisions, key decisions at the wrong time. Comment down below your thoughts on Stoke City and do you think they will ever get back to the Premier League in the next five years? Like, subscribe and Mozilla Designs for the best football prints all made by myself use code STOKE for 15% off. I did a video a couple of months ago about Bristol City being the most boring club in the English leagues. Well, at this rate, it would not be unfair to say that Stork City may also not be far off that. Since going down back in 1718, here are Stork City's season finishers. 16th, 15th, 14th, 14th, 16th, and 17th again. Three positions separates separate six seasons. In six different seasons, only nine points have separated those entire six total finishes. Therefore, Stoke City has become almost the championship's greatest contradiction. Typically seen, if you're a club coming down from the Premier League, you have a massive advantage compared to the rest because you have simply more money. You've got higher wages to deal with the rest. And Stoke City actually does have some good money. They're ran by the Courts family, who are the owners of Bet365, hence why the stadium is called the Bet365 Stadium. And they're also Stoke City Sport as well. They've got, they've got money. Like, they've spent money, yet appear to have grown completely incapable of any progress. The build has followed another rebuild. Manager after manager. And now Schumacher is sacked again, and they have to go for the cycle all over again. The contradiction is the fact that Typically, you spend a decent amount of money, which they have, and you simply will never to be get it right eventually. However, it seems to never work time and time again. In terms of how much money the Courts family has, according to the Sunday's Time Rich list, they reckon about £8.8 .8 billion. This would make the Courts family, Stoke City's owners, the 16th wealthiest family in the entirety of the UK. And this is the main issue here. 
It is very easy and it makes much more sense to have a, a wealthy owner or just an owner which you can tell they don't really care about the club. They see the club as a bit of a sort of, you know, a marketing ploy. Something can be said for the likes of, let's say, over at West Bromwich Albion or at Reading or at so many other clubs that simply does not have an owner that cares about the world being in the club. This is different. They have spent the money. They have backed the club. And they are still visible and still active at games. They just simply don't know what to do. In terms of FFP, Stork City's owners have always kind of gone towards the EFL trying to alter these rules. As even though they got a ton of money because of FFP, their hands have been tied here in terms of how much they can really spend. According to an article by The Athletic, there was an ex-employee within the club and this is what they had to say about the culture at Stork City. Quote, They've never got the culture right. It's a very cold culture. It's the one club I've been at where there's no collective will to want to win. I've been at other clubs where players know what the badge means and who they're playing for. It's about livelihoods and jobs. At Stork, it's nothing like that. It's soulless. There's no oomph about it. There's never any suggestion of getting people together. Let's win the title. One club, one team. None of that. And maybe that wealth, that really large safety blanket behind Stork City may also lead to this feeling of being comfortable where if you're a player, if you're an owner, when it comes to the ramifications of what underperforming may do to the club, like if you feel comfortable, you know you're safe, you may not have that extra edge to go the extra mile unlike other clubs. The best sample in recent years is the likes of Luton Town. Just to have a little look at their transfers in terms of how much money they have really spent. The biggest kind of hit you can really make at Stoke is that in terms of their signings, it comes across very safe. And as what some fans also quote here, somewhat of a retirement home. In Stoke's first season in the championship, they sold some key players, Shakir being the main one of them. Also sold the likes of Sobi, Muniez, Lee Grant, and altogether brought in around 25 million pound. And then brought in about 55 million pound worth of players in a championship, which is a lot of money considering the time. 12 mil on Benneka Forby, around 10 mil of Tom Ince, Sam Vaux was 7 mil, Ryan Woods 6 mil, Etebo, Sam Klukas, James McLean, Danny Barth, Federici, so many players came through the door at Stork and that led to a, <laughs> I can't believe it, that led to a 16th place finish when they spent about 50 million pounds in the championship. That is obscene. Since then, they've been paying the price of it. Of course, the next year, spending nowhere near as much, about, fifth, about 5 million euro. And the next year, around 2 million, 4 million in the next, and absolutely nothing in the next year. However, last season, they tried to really go out there and commit themselves in the market. So they went out there and spent about 20 million pound. And like, so Vuta Berger, Ryan Emne, Manoff, Laris, John Bay, Pearson, a ton of players came through the door and they saw the likes of Jacob Brown for about 2.5 and Josh Tymon for about £2 million as well. So he's brought in a little bit. However, it is always just too far of reach at every opportunity. Dork City have had the likes of Alex Neal come through the door, the likes of a hey, Gary Rarito, Nathan Jones come through the door as well and just not being able to last even a year really. Some of these managers when they arrived had pretty high expectations and pretty high stocks on them. They did a decent jobs at clubs in the lower league so I could maybe around the same level and this could be seen as a bit of a step up to have more money, they have to have more backing to actually go and do more on the market to make a squad in their image. Yet it just never works out. And after all these years, all these different managers, different players, it's all confusing on how to really play because there's never really one identity. If I was to say to you what is a stork way of playing, that's not really an easy question because no one really knows. And by time, you can give a manager to give the time to actually make that image, make that identity, they're out the door. And Schumacher's already gone through that now. In 2018, when Stoke City played Leeds on the first day of the year, there was a big moment because Leeds were on the rise under Bielsa and Stoke had a lot of you know, big players at that level. Jack Butler, Joe Allen, Ryan Shawcross, Jamie McLean, Ben Forby. They had some good players there. They also had Peter Crouch off the bench with a Darren Fletcher and Boljan. So they still had some decent players, you would think, at that level. And they were seen as the favourites for promotion. 
However, the league just completely consumed them. And that I'd like to critique about the signings that they have made, with many being seen as more safe than brave, and with a pattern of recruiting players that appears to be going on a downward trajectory. For example, Dwight Gale went to Stork, brought in, scored three goals in 50 games, and then went off to Derby County at the age of 34. According to one former Stork City player, he quoted, the feel of the football club was just never quite right. Stork almost felt clinical, as though it just wasn't the right environment. It never felt like there was much of a relationship between the team and the fans anymore. And that could be also fair to say, when you look at a Stork game these days, there's a lot of empty seats due to what's happened in recent years and the atmosphere never really has been there. The last time I saw some real atmosphere was in the huge game between Stork City and Plymouth Argyle last season without a burger and they, they, they got the win in that game as a big moment for them. However, it feels like same old, same old. And with each passing year, with Stork in the Championship, the harder it will get for them to be back in top flight. And with Schumacher now being sacked, the cycle made us continue again. So, tell me down below your thoughts on what's going on at Stork City. And I hope you guys did enjoy. See you next time.